uh, LifeSite News, I, I think this article was actually written by John Henry Weston himself. Yes, it was. In 1917, around the time of the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima, and on the eve of the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, Brother Maximilian Kolbe was in Rome as a theology student at the famous Gregorian University. Now, 1917 marked the 200th anniversary of Freemasonry. And the Masons were out in force in Rome to celebrate. Their presence in the Eternal City was public and flagrant. Banners, posters, and leaflets were everywhere. The young friar with his own eyes and recorded the events in his notebooks, blasphemous processions of Masons to the Vatican with the Masons singing songs in honor of Satan. Wow. So in case anybody has says, Oh, you guys are exaggerating. When you guys say the Masons or the, the Freemasons are, uh, are demonic. No, we're not. That's a fact. No, no. Catholic saints have told us that. That's right. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to go by the testimony of a Catholic saint versus, uh, you know, the four o'clock news or six o'clock news. Mm -hmm. There's Satanists. If St. Maximilian Colby saw this and wrote, and wrote this down, that's good enough for me. I don't need any more evidence. Some of the Masonic banners carried the inscription. Satan will rule in the Vatican yep. and the Pope will be his slave. Again, Masons are Satanist. So let's hear the account of Brother Maximilian himself. Here's what he said. Freemasonry in Rome appeared more and more in public and <laughs> unfurled in plain view of the Vatican windows their banners, depicting St. Michael the Archangel trampled and defeated by Lucifer, which is quite the opposite of what happened in heaven. It was the other way around. And they distributed these blasphemous leaflets reviling the Holy Father at the time. <laughs> so much for a secret society and so much for a non-religious organization of free thinkers like they like to call themselves. It was as if these enemies of the Church of Christ sensed that they were on the cusp of a great victory and allowed them the mask to slip. And in a sense, they have indeed achieved a great victory. We've just marked the anniversary of the First World War where the flower of Europe's youth were sent to kill each other in the battlefields. And the world still has not recovered from the social effects of this war. Jesse, let me just jump in and mention, you said Brother Maximilian, and that's because he was a seminarian when all this went on. He wasn't even a Catholic priest at the time, but this really <clears throat> made him really focused on what he felt God called him to do as starting the Knights of the Immaculate, and we'll get into that. But continue, Jess. And what can we say of those words recorded by Brother Maximilian Colby at the time, where he, where he writes, Sat where he saw them, the, the banners that said, Satan will rule in the Vatican and the Pope will be his slave. In other words, he was not talking about the Pope at his day and age. That was a holy Pope at that yep. time. Mm -hmm. He was talking about a future Pope, Terry. Yep, of course. A future Pope Prophetic. would be a slave of the Masons. That's what he said. Yeah. This mortal hatred of the Church of Christ and of his vicar, said St. Maximil Maximilian Colby, proceeds from the principle of Freemasonry. What are the principles of Freemasonry? Here they are. <clears throat> Number one, the destruction of all religion, but especially the Catholic religion. All over the world, the scattered cells of this mafia strive in the most varied ways, more or less visibly, to reach the same goal. And in doing so, it makes use of a whole horde of associations with various names and purposes, which under its influence still spread religious indifference and weaken morality. Well, he's nailing it, Jesse. What are the ideals of Freemasonry? This is what the liberals and the modernists uh, have accepted here in America and even in Europe as well. Oh, yeah. The ideals of Freemasonry are the ideals of the French Revolution. Yep. What are they? Secularized liberty, number one. Number two, equality and fraternity. Number three, most important, detached from God. Okay? Yep. So liberty and equality and fraternity, but de ha has no reference to God. 
detached from God. These are now the very air that we breathe in our societies. Whether Today, you know it or not. right now, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's really interesting? I'll jump in. One of the encyclicals or writings of, of uh, Pope Francis, uh, one of the group in Europe of Masons complimented Pope Francis's writings because they so reflected the Masonic principles of, you know, kind of a, a, a you know, brotherhood of mankind. He used language that they use. So I, I just make that point because, you know, I can, I'll give an, a, a statement. I can tell you who you are by the, who your friends are. And uh, they were really complimentary about Pope Francis's material. Okay. Oh, yeah. That, and that, yeah. that says it all. And just, can I just jump on one more yeah, thing yeah, i yeah. got to say? When all this is going on with St. Maximilian Kobe, remember I was a 20-year-old guy going into a Franciscan monastery. And when we would say our prayers, Jesse, for um, St. Maximilian Kobe, when he said, pray for those enemies of Holy Church, and then we'd say, especially the Freemasons. While I was in formation, we got a memo from Rome which was, you know, saying that a Knights of the Maculata, please do not use uh, the Knights. And when you say those enemies, don't name the Masons by name. Stop doing that. And I was like, what? That's ridiculous. Just, I'm a young guy. I'm going, I raise my hand. What do you mean we're not going to say what the saint asked us, or blessed at the time, is asking us to pray for those Freemasons, the enemies of Holy Church. He said, hey, sit down, Terry. And we're just going to obey on this one. We're just going to do it. And I guess, Jesse, that's probably why I didn't last in the monastery, because I asked too many questions. <laughs> All right, I had to say that, Jess. Well, we already know from Bella Dodd that there was communists and Masons already back in the 50s yeah. in the Roman Curia. Back that's in a the fact. 50s. Yeah. The 50s, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we've been infiltrated. This has been going on for decades. Yeah. And, and this is why St. Maximilian Kolbe started the Knights of the Immaculata. We'll get more into this. We're talking about one of the biggest problems in the world right now, which yep. is Freemasonry. That's right. <clears throat> They've infiltrated business, the church, politics, medicine, big tech. Yep. Uh, pretty much anything that has any human interaction. Uh, they've, they're all, they also are part of the rich and famous. They're also very uh, tied in with Hollywood. And so this is a very real problem because these people do not worship the same God that we worship. In fact, Father Chad Ripperger says in his book, Deliverance Prayers from the Laity, that who they worship is Satan. Yep. So, uh, and uh, <clears throat> they look at revolution as a punish. Well, th oh, this part of the Article is called Revolution as Punishment for Blasphemy. Wow. In the 19th century, we were receiving divine warnings of what was coming and apparitions approved as credible by the church. Our Lord appeared to the Carmelite nun, Sister Mary of St. Peter in 1843, and warned her that he was about to punish the world for all of the public, universal blasphemy, particularly against the name of God, against his Catholic church, and the desecration of Sundays. Wow. All of these things have only gotten worse. You think? Oh my he revealed gosh. to Sister Mary that God was going to punish mankind for these crimes through the malice of revolutionary men. Wow. And particularly by means of communism. We don't even need to mention the heirs of Rush and Fatima here. Well, it looks, Terry, like those prophecies are being fulfilled. We're being you got it, buddy. We're being attacked by wicked men that are communists right now in America, not yep. just not just overseas. No. Perhaps all of this sounded quaint ten years ago, or as if it was referring to the 20th century. Today, at the end of 2021, it seems horribly up to date. So, what's Brother Maximilian's response? Because <laughs> he was a seminarian back then. That's right. So what shall we do, he says. What can we do? What did Brother Maximilian do? Colby do? Seeing this march of near triumph in the holy city of Rome, well, seeing these celebrations and process in Rome, he wrote, is it possible that our enemies must carry on their work to the point of taking over and that we remain idle or at the most just pray without taking any action? Do we not have weapons more powerful than theirs? the protection of heaven and the Immaculate Virgin, the Immaculate and undefeated Queen who fights off every heresy will not give the field over to the enemy that is raising its head again. If she finds servants who are faithful and docile to her orders, she will win new victories greater than we would imagine. The idea occurred to me 
Brother Maximilian wrote, to found an association to fight against Freemasonry and the other servants of Lucifer. What this association, what is its essence? Mm -hmm. He called it the Militia Immaculata, the Knights of the Immaculata in English. And this is its program. Terry, you should read it since you're I fine. love it. Yeah, I'm a knight since 78. Yeah. Yep. To conquer the entire world as quickly as possible. I like that urgency. And every soul that is living now or will exist until the end of the world for the Immaculata and through her and for the sacred heart of Jesus. That's what we would pray in our consecration every day <clears throat> for the knights. And I love St. Maximilian Kolbe's zeal. I believe, Jesse, a lot of my zeal came mm. from St. Maximilian Kolbe and yeah, Fulton Sheen. that's pretty Sheen. obvious. Yeah, well, yeah. that's to the two. Those he, two. Yeah. There are various facets to the organization, some of them active and others more spiritual, but at the heart is the total consecration to the Immaculate Virgin and prayers for the Freemasons. Mm. And this is what really blew me away again, Jesse, that they even infiltrated our own organization to say, stop talking about, or whoever from Rome said, stop making that comment about praying for the Freemasons. <laughs> Dude, this is what we were founded for. That's what I had said when I was a young 20-year-old pup in the monastery. I said, that makes no sense to me. But as we say, we all know that we have a Christian duty. You know, it's a biblical duty to love and pray for our enemies. That's biblical. 